people in the choir know you, but people in the congregation might not. Um, who are you and, and where are you in life? Okay, well, um, I'm the Chalice Choir Director, have been for the better part of 10 years, and have added Music Director to my title here uh, in the past year. I'm also a full-time high school choir director in Grove City, Ohio at Central Crossing High School. And I'm in my, um, gosh, 15th year, I think, of teaching at uh, high school and middle school level. I am currently working on a doctoral degree in conducting from Ohio State. And uh, I am finished with all of my coursework and in the, in the middle of writing my document. So I think that's where I am in life. <laughs> What's your dissertation going to be on? Uh, I'm writing a um, paper on the work Praise to God, which is a large uh, choral orchestral work written by the early American composer George Frederick Bristow. And um, I'm, it was one of the original, one of the very first large scale uh, choral orchestral pieces written by an American composer that was actually performed and written about and so, but it's been completely unstudied and unperformed since 1861. So that's what I'm working on. Do you consider yourself a conductor, a musician? There's gotta be some gray area between those two. Uh, well, I guess, um, I mean, I, I consider myself a musician because music is kind of what I do all day long in my life. Um, I do consider myself a conductor, but uh, I suppose more of a director, more of an educator. Um, I spend comparatively little time of my, you know, in my life waving my arms, but I spend a lot more time teaching people, um, teaching singers how to shape music, how to feel music, how to read music. Um, I am also a singer. Uh, but I don't sing much anymore because I've had a lot of vocal problems. I had a polyp um, on my vocal folds about three, maybe four years ago that um, they've never really, it, the polyp is not present right now, but I have a lot of drainage issues that causes, uh, cause my voice to scar sometimes. And so I don't get to do as much singing as I used to do. That's a shame. I've heard your voice. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. That's a loss. Um, did you grow up knowing you wanted to be a musician? How did this, how did you find this path? Um, I guess, uh, I loved music all the time as a child. My family was very musical. My mom's family, uh, were all singers and guitar players, banjo players. My grandfather, um, was a very well-known, uh, banjo player in Florida, uh, for many years in his life. And, um, singing just came naturally. I, I was sung to and sang from the time, well, from the earliest time that I can remember. Um, I knew I wanted to be a teacher, I think, although at some point in my life I wanted to be an actor or a singer. Um, and when it came time for me to figure out what I was doing after high school, I think I pursued the idea of going into musical theater or something for a hot minute and then decided that that was not for me, and um, decided that I wanted to be a music teacher. And so I got a degree in music education, and um, it was actually one of the few, a, a lot of people start a degree in music education, but when you look at the graduation numbers, don't finish. But I actually finished what I, what I thought I would do, and, and taught right out of the gate, and then took a couple years off, because I kind of freaked out um, and realized that it was a lot. Um, but I think I needed those two years off to realize that that's what I wanted to do and what I needed to do. So there's a long answer to your question. That's, no, that's great. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Um, what kind of music do you enjoy listening to most? And what kind of music do you like teaching and conducting? If those are different or the same, I'm curious. I love all kinds of music. Um, I mean, in the car, is where I listen to most of the music that I listen to because sometimes you have to shut music out of your life when it's what you do all day long. Um, but you know, it could in the car there could be classical music on, there could be uh, pop music on. I really love um, uh, folk music from the '60s and, and singer-songwriter music of the '70s and a little bit of what I grew up with in the '80s and '90s. But I love older pop music, not so much what you hear today. Although there's some things that I enjoy. Um, I grew up with country music, so I still have an affinity for 
older country music. I'm not in love with now country music. Um, but I also love listening to classical music. I, I especially love listening to uh, instrumental classic, classical music because that's not what I do all day long. Um, what kind of music do I love to conduct? Oh gosh, all of it. Um, I love I love music by Mendelssohn. I love music by the um, early 20th century English composers like Vaughn Williams and Herbert Howells. Um, I love um, some more modern music by uh, like Morton Lauridson and um, Z. Randall Stroop. Um, so I, I, I love all of it. I guess I just love good music. Um, uh, it's hard to say what is good music and what is not good music, but I love good music. You know it when you hear it. That's, I, yeah, that's right. Um, we are, like I said, this is the inaugural broadcast of Curiosity Friday. Um, you mentioned that music was in your home as you grew up. Um, we are facing weeks, if not much longer, where families are going to be staying in place for the bulk of their time. Um, what would you say to families with young kids on keeping their spirits intact um, as they stay home and have less contact with their, with their friends? We have, um, we're so lucky today in the technology that we have that we can hear almost whatever music we want to listen to whenever at any time of the day that we want to listen to. Um, and so I think playing music all the time is helpful. Uh, turn on music that, that kids love to sing. Um, maybe make instruments at home if you don't have anything, you know, make instruments you can bang on. I can remember when I was a little kid, uh, my grandmother, um, putting beans into two uh, aluminum pie pans and squeezing together so that I could shake something. Um, if somebody in the, in the family does play an instrument, guitar, piano, have a sing along. Um, I'm, I've been watching friends of mine online talk about having virtual sing alongs where one person is online playing the piano and let it, you know, getting people to, to tune in live and sing along at home, just even though you maybe, maybe can't hear each other, um, you're part of some kind of music making community. Um, there's lots of things out there and I think uh, anything you want to find is probably available. Terrific. Brandon, thank you. Thank you.